Day and night for eleven exhausting days, Frederick Banting had been working endlessly in the laboratory, preparing sample after sample of a hormone taken from the pancreas of cattle. This hormone, they hoped, would become a breakthrough that would save millions of lives. But in truth, the team's focus was on saving just one, 14-year-old Leonard Thompson. Leonard weighed just 30 kilograms or 65 pounds, clinging to life in a Toronto General Hospital bed. Diagnosed with diabetes, his future was a slow and painful death. But Frederick Banting wasn't ready to accept that fate for him or for anyone else battling this disease. The team, led by Banting, had faced failure before. The last extract had caused an allergic reaction in Leonard, but now they believed they had purified the hormone enough to try again. With bated breath, they administered the new injection. It worked. Blood sugar levels dropped. Insulin, the hormone they'd been chasing, had finally been found. Frederick Banting was born on a small farm in Ontario, Canada, on November 14, 1891. Life was quiet, simple, and shaped by the rural landscape around him. But two formative events in his youth would forever change the course of his life. In one event, Banting witnessed a roof collapse injuring two men. He rushed to fetch the town doctor whose calm and skill made a lasting impression on young Frederick. The second event was far more personal. Banting lost his childhood friend Jane to diabetes. She had been bright and full of energy until the disease began to drain her life away. Her death left Frederick deeply affected, sparking his first thoughts of curing this silent killer. Determined to pursue a career in medicine, Banting enrolled at the University of Toronto, where he would later make his groundbreaking discovery. Banting's path to medical school was not without its challenges. He faced financial difficulties and personal setbacks, but his unwavering determination and passion for medicine propelled him forward. He graduated with his medical degree in 1916, just as the First World War was raging in Europe. Driven by a sense of duty, Banting enlisted in the Canadian Army Medical Corps, serving as a medical officer on the battlefields of France. His experiences treating wounded soldiers firsthand left an indelible mark on him, deepening his compassion for the sick and injured. Banting's wartime experiences exposed him to the harsh realities of human suffering and the limitations of medical knowledge at the time. He witnessed firsthand the devastating effects of diseases like diabetes. These experiences fueled his desire to make a real difference in the lives of patients. After the war, Banting completed his education and began working as an orthopedic surgeon. He opened a clinic in London, Ontario, but struggled to find patients. While teaching part-time at the University of Western Ontario, Banting prepared a lecture on the pancreas. Physicians knew that diabetes was caused by a malfunction of the pancreas, an organ located near the stomach, but the exact nature of this malfunction remained a mystery. Some researchers believe that the pancreas produced a substance essential for regulating blood sugar levels, but no one had been able to isolate it. Undeterred by the challenges ahead, Banting immersed himself in the study of diabetes. He read every medical paper he could find on the subject, meticulously dissecting the existing research and formulating his own hypotheses. His relentless pursuit of knowledge and his unwavering belief that a cure for diabetes was within reach would ultimately lead him to his groundbreaking discovery. In 1920, Banting came across a research paper that would change the course of his career. The paper, written by American researchers, suggested that a specific group of cells in the pancreas, known as the islets of Langerhans, might hold the key to treating diabetes. Banting became convinced that these cells produced the elusive substance that regulated blood sugar. He brought his idea to Professor John McLeod, a leading expert in carbohydrate metabolism at the University of Toronto. Though initially skeptical, McLeod gave Banting access to his laboratory. Alongside medical student Charles Best, Banting began the experiments that would lead to the discovery of insulin. With Best by his side, Banting embarked on a series of groundbreaking experiments. They surgically removed the pancreases from dogs, inducing diabetes, and then injected the animals with extracts from the islets of Langerhans of healthy dogs. The results were astonishing. The diabetic dogs, once on the brink of death, showed remarkable improvement. 
their blood sugar levels stabilized and they regained their energy and appetite. Banting and Best had done it, they had successfully isolated insulin, the life-saving pancreatic secretion that had eluded researchers for decades. Their discovery was met with both excitement and skepticism from the scientific community. Some doubted the validity of their findings while others hailed it as a medical miracle. As the team refined their methods they began producing insulin for human use. This breakthrough led to the first successful treatment of a human diabetic patient, Leonard Thompson. In 1923, Frederick Banting joined Professor McLeod as the youngest recipients of the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. But the victory was tinged with animosity. Banting felt that McLeod had taken undue credit for the discovery. He was bitter at the exclusion of Charles Best. As a gesture of fairness, he shared half his prize money with him. The tension between Banting and McLeod continued to simmer, casting a shadow over one of the greatest medical discoveries of the 20th century. Stay curious, stay informed, stay tuned to Era Shapers.